So Dapper has been a really popular data access library for over a decade, but when it comes time to use it with domain entities, there's a few things that can create a bit of friction. So in this series, I want to show you how you can supercharge your Dapper repositories to be faster and more maintainable. I've published the code for these examples in GitHub, and the link is down below in the description. So let's start with a diagram of the aggregate route for my example. It starts at the top with a customer object, then contains a set of orders, and each order is comprised of order items, and each order item references a product. And we want to have a repository that uses Dapper to return a customer or a set of customers based on some filtering criteria. So here's two examples of queries that can be used to populate our aggregate. Now, both queries include multiple result sets that will provide the data for related orders, order items, and products. And we want to get all the data needed for our aggregates with one call to SQL Server to minimize the latency of a call over the network. And one filter is based off of a customer ID and the other is based off the customer's name. So let's think about why these two queries represent a problem. Well, first off, we have a lot of duplicated work in terms of managing what fields are returned and the tables that need to be joined. It'd be better if all of that logic was written once in a base query that was responsible for getting the needed data to populate the aggregate. The second problem can be seen when the order items are filtered by the customer's name. We really just want the order items that are related to the order that was found in the previous result set, but we're forced to do that name search three times. For small sets of data, we may not care, but as the data gets bigger, it can become a problem. So let's look at a way to separate the query from the filtering logic. We can separate them by writing a query that acts as a filter and then passes the results onto the query that populates the aggregate. A table variable is used to store the primary key for a customer and we fill it with all of the results we want to get populated. Now notice that the table variable customers gets declared. I'm including the primary key annotation and that means that the results in the table variable will be sorted. If you're returning a large number of customers, that will speed up any hash matches that SQL would have had to do. Now, Dapper commands generally require two things, a query string and an object with the parameters that get fed into the query. And in the first example, you can see that we're querying by a customer ID, so we populate the table variable with the customer ID that we're looking for. And I also create a new object for the parameters that are needed in the filtering query, which in this case means providing the customer ID. Then I call a repository method with those two pieces of information to get all the aggregates. So these two functions, they really just define a filter. Inside the repository, I have a string that contains the query that brings back all of the data I need to populate this object graph. Now notice how each query references the customer's table variable. I want to properly filter each of the three result sets so using the customer's table variable is an easy way to keep the complexity of any filtering logic out of these queries. The benefit here is that if I need to add another filter, I can focus on filling in that table variable and not think about the other query. Also, if I need to add data to the object graph, I don't need to adjust the filter queries, just the base query. Each of the repository filtering functions call a private method that's responsible for building and returning the aggregate. It takes in a string that contains the SQL query for creating the table variable and executing the search filter. The SQL base variable has the SQL query for getting the data needed to build the aggregate. All we need to do is combine the two queries and execute them. In later parts of this series, I'll show you how the aggregate gets built with the data from the query and some other cool tricks along the way. Thank you for listening.